Hey everybody, Phil here. There's a very, very exciting match going on right now between Am So Good and Barry Sweet. In my opinion, the two best heads up PLO players in the world, if I'm not gonna include myself, which I actually don't think I'm the best, but uh, I'm, I'm close in contention with them. Barry Sweet and Am So Good, both screen names, uh, we don't know their real names, are playing at 5100 PLO, but they're actually uh, cross booking, as it says on two plus two, very sweet posts that are cross booking six X. So it's actually 300, 600. So people have been watching the match and uh, it seems like Barry's been in the thread posting updates. People are posting hand histories, some of the most interesting hands that they've observed in the match. And so today what I'm gonna do is go through the hands, try to get inside their minds, tell you what they might've been thinking, what I think of their plays, kind of where I think the match might be going. I believe that the winner of this match is the best heads up PLO player in the world until someone proves otherwise. To give you a little bit of history on these players, if you're not familiar, Barry Sweet is somebody who came up in the six max PLO games and then started playing heads up PLO and essentially played heads up PLO until nobody was willing to play him, at which point he went and played eight game heads up until basically nobody was willing to play him and he played horse heads up, and then he moved to No Limit Hold'em heads up. And then he had the same level of success. People have stopped playing him at No Limit Hold'em for high stakes. So Barry's kind of this enigma and kind of freakishly talented uh, Swedish player. Eight, nine years ago, we played some heads up PLO, and I don't even remember who won. It was a short, like we played a couple of sessions. He kind of became known as the end boss after that time. If I'm being honest, when I issued my Galfon challenge, he was one of the few that I was hoping would not take me up on it. And he actually didn't at that point because of scheduling reasons, but I've been in contact with him. We've talked about potentially playing. Uh, to be honest, i am he's the only player I'm, I would say that I'm afraid of, that I feel like I might be a, a big, big underdog against. Am so good, unlike Barry, is a PLO player through and through. And he's been a heads up specialist for quite some time, although I'm sure he's extremely capable of uh, six max PLO. I have actually played against Amso a number of times. We played a lot of hands together and he's exceptionally good. They have a very interesting clash in styles where Barry is more exploitative and kind of takes lines that seem very strange, but he just seems to win. Amso is, seems to be, in my opinion, the most accurate heads up PLO player from an, a GTO perspective. There have been so many times in my play against him where I've looked at a hand and I'm just like, that can't be right. That can't be good. I go look it up in the solver and, and it is. So I've looked Amso's play up really quick. And uh, as usual, uh, something that I thought was not a thing is a thing. He's either putting in more hours studying than anybody else, or he's better at retaining information than anybody else or some combo of the two. For what it's worth in my play against Amso, he certainly thinks he has the edge. I feel like I have an edge, but the results have been in his favor. So I, you know, I have no evidence of that, uh, of my belief, supporting my belief. So if you were to ask me, I right now would bet on Barry Sweet. That's based on my perception of him just, the, the fact that he's won in so many games and beaten the best in so many games. As a more exploitative player myself, I have a lot of respect for his approach to the game. And I think somebody who's who's playing in kind of the weird style that he's playing and having success, there must be something really to it. There's a chance he would be a massive favorite against me. I would play him a little bit because I want to find out. If I were betting, I would bet on Barry Sweet, but I would not count Amso out. So I hope you're half as excited as I am to watch uh, these two great players play. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, so this first hand we have Amso on the button. He opens the 300, Barry Sweet, three bets. And we had to do a three, three, six flop. So this is a board on which I would do uh, essentially no C betting. I would check my full range. Let's see how Barry proceeds. He does, well, we don't know what he's doing with his range, but he checks this hand. Amso checks back and they head to the 10 of clubs turn. Barry's now betting third pot roughly. So he's kind of leveraging his overpair advantage. I mean, that's essentially all he's doing. He's leveraging his overpair advantage in a spot where Amso checked the flop. Amso raises pretty big. Um, this is a near pot raise. Pot would be uh, 3,500 or so. Um, he's saying that he slow played the flop or he spiked a set of tens. 
And obviously he could also have some kind of turned draw. Um, so let's see how Barry proceeds, obviously, because this was an interesting hand, something's gonna happen. Um, and Barry actually clicks it back, it's 2,500, yeah. So Barry clicks it back. And this is kind of a, a perfect example of unorthodox play uh, from Barry Sweet. In, in a lot of cases, like when you're out of position here, you're leveraging your overpair advantage. And when you get raised, your opponent is representing that they have trips or a full house. And so when you have a hand that can beat trips or a full house, you often, not always, but you often want to just call, first of all, to protect your overpairs from just getting run over. Um, so you, you can kind of punish bluffs. But second of all, because most of those hands continue betting most rivers, not all rivers, but most rivers. So this is a very unorthodox play from Barry right off the bat. He clicks it back, Amso calls. So you gotta keep in mind when Amso makes a big raise and then calls this click back, he kind of has to have something. Um, could he have, like the weakest he can have is some kind of weird, um, like 10, nine, nine, that he made a that he bluffed with and just doesn't believe Barry. Um, but more likely he's got trips, a boat, or some kind of draw. Now, most four, five, seven hands bet the flop. So I think it's more likely he would have a turned draw, uh, whether that's clubs or the uh like you know, seven, eight, nine type inner in inside wrap. But maybe it's you know, seven, five with not clubs or something like that. Um, but most of the time he's gonna have some kind of very strong hand. Um, so they have less than half pot on the river. Barry's going to check. So, okay. So actually like putting Amso on a hand is not crazy. I mean, like basically I know what his value range is. I know kind of what his potential bluffs are uh, here, but putting Barry on a range is really hard because he's played this hand uh, in such a weird way. So he's kind of saying to me either like he could just have like 10, 10 queen. And he's like, well, I could jam for value, but if I check, it kind of looks like I spiked a queen. So then Amso is going to shove a three anyways. And if he missed a draw, I can get him to bluff. So that would make sense to me. Um, it could also been, have been some kind of turn bluff that river to queen. So ace queen five, four, for example. Um, but yeah, it's hard, it's hard to figure out what he might have. Uh, Amso is going to shove, uh, and Barry calls. So Barry has showdown value. We'll see if it's a trap or not, or he spiked a queen. And then Amso, I mean, yeah, his value range is trips plus. It is such a weird line that I could see him potentially checking back trips occasionally, but pro probably just shoves. And um, yeah, his bluffs are kind of what you'd expect. So he actually turned a huge draw. Um, so that makes sense. And Barry had just the top pair on the turn and spiked the queen. So the river check makes total sense because you can't get value with queen 10 by betting, but it's too strong of a hand to bluff with because occasionally Amso will have hands like this or Amso might have like the 10 nine nines that you beat. Well, his river play, at least the check is standard, whether you call or not, you know, you, you make a read or you, you get an idea of Amso's range. But the turn, basically the turn click back is the only very, very unorthodox play from Barry, uh, I can't really analyze it beyond that, but this time it worked out for him. Uh, so in this next hand, Barry's on the button. Amso three bets. Barry calls, seven, three, deuce, two tone. Big bet from Amso, good. Kind of repping over pair plus flush draw. Um, but of course, they, they, in, th in C bet ranges and three bet pots, there's a lot of mixing. So Barry calls. Amso bets small on the turn. I don't know what to make of this. He's kind of saying that he has like a weak draw, a weak pair, like maybe he turned a jack and he doesn't want to check, but he doesn't want to pot. Or he has some kind of very nutted hand that would like to keep Barry in. Um, Barry stays in, he obliges. And Amso checks the river. Barry's going to jam. So, I mean, because this was categorized as an interesting hand, I think we're going to see a call. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see if Amso trapped here on the river with something or just spiked a queen with some kind of weird turn bet or, or you know, he had a jack and he just doesn't believe because a lot of draws did miss. And this is one of those spots where you'll find some players in Barry's spot 
just like be way over bluffing because so many draws missed and they bluff with all of them. And then you'll find other players who think to themselves, oh, so many draws missed, so I can't really represent that much. So I'm going to give up with a lot of my potential bluffs. Um, I would assume both of these players are more balanced than that. Um, Barry actually had Jack, Jack. So this is another unorthodox play. Um, Amso had a hand that kind of makes sense. I would say, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't like either of their turn lines. I think Amso has a really good big bet hand on the turn that like you have one pair, so you don't really mind if Barry folds one pair and you're doing so well against a lot of calling hands, but I don't know, just small betting, I feel like gives them too much of a price and you still get like, if you're behind, you get raised and stacked still. It's not like you can, it's not like you're deep enough that, that like small betting get, allows you to call and have a lot of play left on the river. So I don't like that bet. And then Barry's call, I don't really, I mean, I've never done this. I don't think a solver would do this. On a board that's this draw heavy, just flat the turn with the nuts. Um, especially like when the nuts are top set. Sometimes with a straight, of course, even on draw your board, you, you flat to protect your range there. But I mean, he must be thinking that Amso is really polarized there, which is kind of what I was describing. But I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't really think so. Amso is going to have, even like he'll be bet folding some flush draws. So you are giving a free river to those. Maybe he bluffs enough on those rivers to make it work out, but I don't know. Um, this is a play where, to me, both turn lines seem seem unorthodox. Although, like I said, every time I look up an Amso play uh, and solver, it turns out to be good. I'm actually going to look it up real quick. So I've looked Amso's play up really quick. And uh, as usual, uh, something that I thought was not a thing is a thing um, here in Vision GTO Trainer. It looks like it's it's rarely checking, um, but then splitting between a big bet and a small bet. And he won a small bet, which is uh, totally solver approved. I would have never, I mean, to be fair, I rarely have small bets on this turn, but yeah, he, I mean, he. every time you plug one of his weird plays into a solver, it actually is just a standard good play. So let's see now if ace jack jack ever just calls. Um, with hearts it does. So let's go with no hearts. Zero to one. So it actually is also kind of a thing when you have the ace of hearts only though, um, which Barry didn't have the relevant ace. Uh, he hit the jack of spades. So not the craziest play of all time, uh, kind of standard play from Amso and from Barry. It's not as unreasonable as I thought. Neither play was unreasonable and that's why you know, the winner of this match uh, is going to be the king. Barry opens the button. Amso calls in the big blind. Check, C-bet, check, raise, call. I mean, right now, uh, everybody can have a little bit of everything. Turn four. Amso checks. So Amso's saying, you know, I have some kind of, I have some kind of draw that didn't complete. I have like a two pair or a set. And Barry is very clearly saying that he has a straight potentially like top set uh, with a little something else that wants to get more money in against a weaker set and then good river playability, et cetera. And so shoves, usually going to be a straight or like a, a set that just, there's so much money in the pot he wants to end the hand. And Barry calls, probably has a straight. Um, so standard from Barry. From Amso, yeah. I mean, I'm sure if I plugged it in, it'd be good. Uh, you don't really want to bet the turn, so check is good. And then when you face that big of a bet, even if, if Barry's bluffing with some kind of, I don't know, 5-4 combo, he does have some outs, so getting him to fold is good. And if you're beat, like like in this case, you can see he has 38% equity against uh, Barry's straight, which is what he's usually going to have. So I think this is good by both parties. Amso wins the first run, Barry wins the second. Next hand, Amso opens the button, Barry three bets, king, king seven. Barry goes with a very small sizing. This is kind of similar to what I do on these paired boards. And Amso calls. Queen of diamonds. So Barry went with a small sizing. So on a lot of like pair plus flush boards in three bet pots, 
Um, you can even check range, check your full range out of position uh, just because you have so many kind of like tier three hands, like over pairs that just want to get to showdown. And so you you allow that to happen by protecting them with, with your slow plays too. But Barry's chosen to bet here, which uh, is interesting. And Amso raises, which is also interesting. If you're Amso, you, you shouldn't really raise a flush here, even the nut flush. Um, now, could he raise the nut flush to then check back the river and get the amount of money and he wants? Uh, kind of. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a great play. So Amso is representing a boat. In a lot of cases, you just want to continue to slow play a boat and let Barry bet the river before you raise. It's also kind of odd because King 7, you don't really want to raise King 7. So Amso's repping specifically King Queen, I think, um, which may or may not want to raise uh, because you have your opponent drawing dead. So I don't know about this raise. I mean, he's repping King Queen. He probably has it sometimes and he probably has some kind of like Ace of Diamonds plus pair or two pair hand. Otherwise, Barry calls. Um, it's a pretty decent size raise. Um, Barry calls. So he basically has his turn value range minus a few that he's folding. But like he either has a flush or a boat or some kind of weirdly played trips. Check. Amso jams. Barry calls. And let's see him. So Amso is bluffing with Queen 7. No diamond. I think it's a Here's the thing. I think it's a good combo to choose because you want your opponent to have a flush when they're value betting, not a boat, or uh, and you don't even want them to have trips, but you want them to have a flush. So having no diamonds in his hand is a good thing. But on the other hand, I don't know if you even need to raise anything. So that's uh, a little questionable, but I, I, definitely a fine play. Barry has the nuts, so uh, fine play as well, of course. So remember everybody that these are six times the stakes. So when Amso opens here to 300, he's actually opening to 18, 1800. Um, and when Barry three bets to 900, he is actually three betting to 5,400. So these pots are bigger than they appear. Jack five, deuce, two tone. Barry goes with a small bet. Um, I used to have, so I used to have this small sizing on boards like this, but now I just like to use a big sizing like um, like between 1K and 1,200 for, or I should say like 1K and 1,300 even, um, and just bet a little bit less. But I mean, I used to use this strategy and there's nothing terribly wrong with it. Uh, Barry Potts turn. So, I mean, it, there, there, there's not a lot of hand reading to do. There are so many different things he could have here, obviously some bluffs, but his value range is going to be like Queen Jack. It's going to be King, King 10. It's going to be Kings with clubs. Um, stuff like that. 10 on the river, offsuit 10. Barry checks and Amso jams. So Amso is repping a straight. Barry is repping kind of like Queen Jack ish. Um, and that kind of sums up where they're at now. And I think Amso would shove any straights and probably bluff. I don't think he's going to bluff like a queen or better because Barry can have some turn bluffs that just gave up and Amso can have some like three, four, six type hands or three, four with clubs that just, uh, so I think a queen has too much showdown value, but with worse than a queen and a straight blocker, I could see him bluffing, you know, a fair number of those hands. Um, he does have ace, 10, seven, seven with nut clubs. I think this is a good bluff, uh, probably. And Barry actually was trapping with the nuts. So that's interesting. So Barry's flop play, turn play, um, flop play, I'm assuming that's his, just his only sizing, or maybe he splits. I don't know, but either way, um, small betting that is fine. Checking it is also okay to check call. His turn play is very standard. You could go for a check raise, but I think betting is good. Um, Amso's flop call and turn call are stand standard. And then both of their river plays is where it gets a little bit iffy. So Barry unblocks a queen, which should make him want to bet a little bit more. He unblocks clubs, which should make him want to check a little bit more. He blocks two jacks, which I guess should make him want to check a little bit more. Um, I tend to usually shove these spots and let my opponent find something to call with. But here, you know, this obviously worked out. And so... Amso's play, I mean, I said I like it. I think it's got to be okay. Um, you don't really want to have three clubs in your hand. That's certainly a negative, but he doesn't have a three, four, or six. That's good for him. 
and he's got an ace, which is good for him as well. So got to be a fine play by, I mean, I think it's a fine play by everybody, but Rear is really interesting from both their perspectives. It's cool to watch them navigate these things. Barry on the button, he's going to open. Hamso three bets. Barry's going to call. Let's see a flop. Small bet from Amso on the straight board. I feel like he bet bigger than this when I played against him on these boards, but oh well. Checks the turn. Barry's going with a big bet. Barry's representing. Sometimes he'll have like the queen high straight with something else to go along with it. Sometimes he'll have, it. he's mainly repping king 10. Occasionally he'll have like, uh, obviously he'll have some bluffs, but occasionally he'll have maybe the, the queen high straight with nothing to go along with it. And he's looking to bet fold, but I think that's not really standard on board this draw heavy. Uh, Amso check calls. Deuce of clubs on the river. Amso checks. Barry shoves. Amso calls. Let's see him. Um, Barry has a very non-standard <laughs> hand here. So, okay, so he's he's facing his jack, six, four, three. He's facing a really small bet. I think it's probably a fold, even to this small bet. And then on the turn, he's got no equity. I don't, I mean... Look, Barry is Barry, <laughs> but I don't really like this because like, if he wants to rep the queen eye straight, he can still check back and bluff the river. And then that way he can also rep a lot of cards that come in on the river, even though he doesn't have good blockers. Um, this just seems like a lot of money to put in with no equity on a very draw heavy board. Um, so this seems a little suicidal. I mean, jamming the river when you get here this way okay. You'd, I mean, you'd like to have a club blocker, but it is also hard to be bluffing um, in this spot. So I think he would get a lot of credit. Amso had a flush. Uh, Amso's play looks good all around. Um, I think his flush is too weak to lead. Like he's going to want to lead a lot of flushes on the river, but he's going to want to lead like jack high or better flushes. Uh, six high flush, I think is a check. So Amso, I think, played this very well. Barry played this very unorthodox. Um, we saw that earlier work out for him. Here we see it not work out for him. Um, but that's kind of what you get, uh, I believe, with, with Barry. Speaking of which, there's one funny element uh, going on. So at some point, uh, Barry posted on 2 plus 2 that he was having a, a winning week. He posted a winning update. Moose Gills responded uh, saying, great job, boss. My dog's daycare made a collage to celebrate the successful week of gambling. And Barry says, let me know if the dog has a favorite PLO hand. I'll three bet it every time I get it in the match. So the whole match. Luckily for Barry, Moose Gills picks a kind of normal hand, like a decently strong hand, King 977, single suited, aka the lucky dog. So that is now the lucky dog. And then later on, um, <laughs> Barry does post a hand history of him three betting King 977, single suited. Uh, which again, it's not a terrible three bet. He C bets and takes it down. And, and then Barry says, I'll add the next hand anyone says and three bet at 100% too. And somebody said ace, eight, five, deuce, uh, single suited. Someone else said ace, five, 10, four, rainbow, ace, ace, ace. And someone else said quad deuces. And Barry goes and says, I'll three bet all of them, sort of. He says, I'll add ace, eight, five, deuce, single suited, ace, 10, five, four, rainbow, and deuce, 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 deuce for now. He says, ace, 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 x is more combos than I can count to, which uh, is obviously a joke. He's now three betting these weak hands 100% of the time. On April 13th, Barry goes on to post, said, I might have lost a lot of buy-ins yesterday, but the thread hands are still 100% one pots. So the, the hands that people told him to three bet are still winning 100% of pots. He shows uh, his three bet with ace, eight, five deuce suited to the eight. Uh, taking it down on the turn. And he also posts a graph of what appears to be the full match so far. So uh, this is uh, April 13th. It looks like Barry is down roughly 70K, which is seven buy-ins. Uh, so it's 6X the stakes. That's going to be 40, 420,000, I believe. Uh, so not going great. I'm unsure if Barry is doing this just for fun because he wants to have fun. Uh, or as kind of a needle, like a sign of disrespect to Amso, like I can three bet a bunch of terrible hands and still win, which currently he's not winning. But it might, it might be some combination of the two, uh, but definitely 
uh, the two plus two community loves it. Let's get back into some hands though. Raise three bet call, 10, eight, three rainbow check, Barry bets half pot, and so pots and Barry shove. So Barry's kind of saying two pair plus. Amso is saying um, kind of like King King Jack nine, um, ace 10, nine, seven, um, like strong one pair hands, maybe some dry 10, eights. So let's see the hands. Um, Barry has a wrap. These are both a little bit interesting to me. So as Barry, I would have just called the flop and then called basically any turn. It's kind of, I guess, insignificant. And then as Amso, I mean, I'm sure it's solver approved if he's doing it. So uh, I'm not even going to bother looking it up. But it is, I mean, it seems totally reasonable. He's blocking top two. He's blocking top set. He's got two backdoor flush draws and he's got straight draws, yet he has one pair and a lot of turns are going to be dicey for him to play. Maybe he thinks Barry is betting this board uh, or just like betting when check two a little too much. Um, and I guess given that Amso showed this hand... If the turn were a seven offsuit, Amso might check fold. So maybe Barry's right to get it in on the flop. Uh, Amso's gonna win the first and Barry's gonna win the second. They will chop it up. All right, Amso opens button. Barry calls king 10 deuce rainbow. Barry with the check raise. Amso calls. We head to a turn. Barry bets tiny, he's betting uh, one fifth pot. So on the flop, Barry's saying that he has a set or some kind of wrap. Uh, maybe some King 10 with something else to go along with it, but dry King 10, I don't know how often that raises. On the turn, I don't really know what he's saying. He's kind of saying, I have ace, queen, 10. Um, I have like king, queen, jack, 10, although he would three bet that unless it's maybe it's rainbow. Um, queen, jack, deuce, deuce. Like he's saying I have a monster or some weird bluff, I guess. But I think, I mean, maybe this is his small sizing on this board. My small sizing would be more like third pot. And then I would bet third pot with a set of tens, for example, or a set of kings, uh, perhaps, or I might check all that. But um, I don't, basically, I don't know if this sizing is like a vacuum play that in this spot, he just chose to bet this sizing with his hand, or if this is his default sizing in spots like this. But it, uh, to me, it strikes me as a strange default sizing. Uh, Amso calls. So Amso is saying probably not the nuts, although possibly because Barry's play is so odd. And then like two pair, like King nine plus uh, makes a lot of sense. He's always going to come along at these odds. And even like ace, king, queen can come along at these odds. Okay. Queen on the river. Barry checks. Um, he could just have king, king. He could have the king high straight and he just doesn't want to play a big pot. Or like, you know, feels better off checking and check calling than betting and potentially getting raised. Amso bets half pot. He's repping the straight, obviously. And Barry shoves, repping specifically ace jack, which, I mean, ace king jack, ace queen jack deuce or something that, um, I don't know. I wish he could have. Amso calls. We do have a weak ace jack and we have king queen jack. So very interesting plays here. Slightly thin check raise on the flop from Barry. A, I mean, I don't know what to make of his turn sizing, so I'm going to just leave it at that. It's a very reasonable hand to bet some sizing on the turn. Uh, it's just a strange sizing choice. Amso with King Queen Jack decides to just call the turn. I think that's really good. You want to, I mean, when somebody bets tiny, you do want to raise a lot of your nut straights, but the like one combo you would like put into your calling range first would be king queen jack where you block top pair and you have the straight so i think well played by well by amso and barry i'm, I'm not going to say badly played or well played i don't really know it's just a weird play barry going for the check raise on the river is a little bit strange to me just in that he does not block any pairs so amso is going to have a lot of you know king queen 10 that could call a bet yeah i don't know like if if Barry had ace jack king or ace jack ten, um, I would like this more. But or but but blocking none of the pairs is kind of strange. But hey, he got a full stack out of it. Amso's decision against the raise. I mean, the, there's no clear decision either way in theory. So just make a read. Next hand here, 
Amso on the button, he's opening to 300. Barry calls, queen five five, check, check. Offsuit eight on the turn. Barry with the check pot. Amso is calling. So Barry is saying he has trips plus. Amso, you know, could have some slow plays, but he's usually going to have a hand like queen eight or king king. Uh, maybe he turned eight eight. Uh, Barry pots. Amso calls. Let's see them. Barry was bluffing with eight six four four with clubs. Uh, queen five for Amso. So I think the flop check from Amso is kind of unusual. Generally, when you check boats like this, you want to have clubs in your hand so that you at least one club so that you're blocking. Like when if you were to bet now. He's going to get a lot of action from flush draws. He's going to get action from a five. He's going to get action from under pairs to the queen. So usually I don't check this back unless I have a club, uh, at least. And even then I often bet with two clubs and queen five, I always check. Barry's check is normal. His check raise, pretty normal as well. Like you want to fold out a hand like, I don't know, uh, ace, jack, three deuce with a jack high flush draw that played this way. And bombing the river seems okay as well. You're blocking 8-8, eight, eight, which is pretty key. So I think, um, I don't want to say standard, but kind of standard from Barry. And Amso's flop check is a little odd, but it worked out very well for him. And I don't know if that's his default or if that's an adjustment to Barry Sweet. He's trying to induce more bluffs, essentially. All right, Barry Sweet on the button. Gets three bet by Amso. He calls 9-5 deuce, two-tone, check, check. Eight on the turn. Amso's potting, which is interesting. This is a board that favors the imposition player, um, although not by a huge amount. But also out of position, you have a lot of just dry over pairs that you want to protect with, with you know small bets and checks. But he's going for pot. Barry calls. Uh, everything gets there, kind of on the river. Amso checks, kind of claiming six seven or eight eight. Um, Barry Potts claiming a flush. Amso is all in, claiming a nut flush, maybe second nut flush, probably nut flush, or one of, or like King of Diamonds blocker, Ace of Diamonds blocker. Barry calls, claiming that he definitely has a flush, and let's see who has what. So Amso with King High flush, Barry with a Nine High flush, nice sort of thin. I mean, it's not, it's in theory, this is not too thin, but a nice sort of thin check raise from Amso. And I really like that he used 7-7 seven, seven blockers because uh, normally if you get to this river and you have, let's just call it for the sake of argument, uh, king, queen, queen, three with diamonds, which he would not have potted the turn with, but just for the sake of uh, the example, I think you'd often want to bet because you're going to get called by straights, but straights are not going to bet for you. But now that he blocks two sevens, he blocks the straights really hard. And so going for a check raise is going to get Barry to bluff some Jack-10 combos, um, bluff some, uh, I don't know, some like even five deuce or five eight uh, with a diamond, probably going to bluff. And then uh, value bet some flushes. Here he got Barry to bet call the nine high flush. So uh, well played by Amso. I mean, Barry's play flop is good. Turn is good. River is like I would bet, and then you make a decision against the check raise, not a big deal. So I'm really excited to see how this unfolds. I have no issue uh, stating that I, I believe that the winner of this match uh, is the heads up PLO king, um, at least for the time being, that can always change. You know, based on seeing the hands, I kind of saw what I expected. Good plays from both parties. I saw a lot of solver approved plays from Amso, and uh, I saw a few very non-standard plays from Barry Sweet, but I could kind of guess, well, the, the Jack-6, 4-3, I can't really guess uh, the logic there. But the other ones, I could kind of uh, get an idea of why he might be doing what he's doing. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really fun uh, for anybody who loves PLO or just loves seeing the, the greatest compete. I recommend you follow along either uh, in the 2 plus 2 thread or watching them on PokerStars or uh, wherever else the, the action is being followed. If you like this video and you want to see more uh, hand review and or updates on the match and or my opinions on how it's gone, let me know and let me know which of those appeals to you more because uh, you know what you say to me is is going to heavily influence the kind of videos that I put out. So 
Uh, I appreciate your comments. I look forward to uh, responding to you and, and reading all of them. And I will see you in the next video. Take care and good luck to these two.